The first mistake on the list is we tend to not really prepare the hole well enough to fix it properly. So I'm here with my buddy Williams. Williams is a professional drywall guy. He yep. installs and repairs and patches yep. drywall all day every day. What do we need to do to properly prep this hole before we start patching? So the first thing that you have to do is see what is the damage. So right now from here, it's gonna be just a hole. Yep. That's it, right? But what you don't see is this. What is behind? Okay. So it's weak. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to rip off this behind okay. the driveway. So it looks like a lot of the damage here blew out on the back side. Yeah. And that's what we need to, to clean up. So we need to tear all that out then. Yeah. Okay. Take all that we, out. We've got we've got a big big chunk right here. Yes. And then do we care about the the, the front? Uh yes, a little bit. Just let's see. Okay. Yeah. So now that we've got all the loose stuff taken away, what's next? Try to make a square. Okay. Yeah. So we need some new drywall to patch yes. it, right? So this stuff here, I picked this up at Home Depot. So we're going to use this and cut a patch. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So how do we do that? What I'm going to do is try to cut my drywall bigger. A little bit bigger. Yeah. Okay. I just mark it Okay. and just go all the way through the drywall. Okay. And now we do the same in another way. Snap it. Actually, you can do it in the way you want to do it. Right. Let's do it this way. Just to have fun. Sure. <laughs> right now, you can have your, how you call this? Jab saw. Jab saw. Is what I call it. Or a okay. drywall saw. Drywall saw. Yeah. Or... So this I know is optional because I've done this type of work without using it, but it makes it so much easier. You can use it with your utility knife. Right. It's okay. Just take a little bit longer because you have to go like over and over and over. Over and over doing this. But you're easier easier than that, we can just use the jab saw if you've got one. Easy. Just there it goes. So now we've got our new hole cut. Oh, you got to test fit oh, first. All right, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So that fits in there good. The next step is backing. Okay. So we need some backing to screw the new drywall in. But these are just big stick rulers. They're big stir sticks for five gallon buckets. But if I'm not mistaken, I think what we talked about is you can use anything, right? Yes. For a backer. You can use some two by fours if you have some stuff around. Trim, baseboards. Yeah, some trim, some baseboards. Baseboards. Yeah. Anything that you can use just to hold the new drywall. Okay. So now we've got some uh, drywall screws drywall here. Screw. For the driver for this, I've just got okay. a regular subcompact okay. drill here, just a regular with the Phillips bit. So I actually asked him not to use the screw gun yes. because I wanted to show everybody's got one of these most likely, or at least a screwdriver, yes. worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, but uh, I asked him to leave his screw gun in the truck so that we can just use what I've got, you know, what, what everybody's got handy. Yeah. How much do we need, right? For, for Just, you need just enough to hold the driver. Okay. So probably I will say maybe around this way. Okay. Okay. One thing, I don't go too deep, right? Right. And that is important. So that actually takes us to our second thing I want to talk yeah. about. The mistake we tend to make as DIYers is we'll either not drive this in far enough or we'll drive it too far. So if you don't go far enough, you will see the screw. It'll the head, Pop off, head. Yeah. yeah. So and it's gonna be hard to try to match the texture and try to make it everything clean and looks good. If you go too deep, probably once you start to to put in the new piece, it will fall off. Okay, because it yeah. doesn't have the structural integrity to actually yeah. hold on properly. And you will be frustrated. <laughs> okay. All right. So you got them just below the surface, so where we yeah. can fill them in. Uh, and you can push deep. it with your hands. Right, make sure and that's it, nice and secure. Yeah, this is strong enough. Let's go with the new piece. Yeah, right there. Yeah. All right, so now we've done the prep. So that takes care of problem number one that we tend to make where okay. we don't have it prepped, we don't have it backed properly. So that's taken care of. And then we also talked about the depth of our screws, right? Getting that yes. just right. So now we're ready to go on to number three mistake that we tend to make, which is not using the right tools for the job. And the biggest culprit of that, I've seen people trying to use something like this to fix drywall. And I've been guilty of this in the, in the past as well. <laughs> this is, A, this is plastic, yes. which tends to scuff. This one's got little nicks on it. Um, then 
we might think we're better off using one of these, a little putty knife, and again, just too narrow to do the job properly. So what do you recommend that we use as far as a knife for uh, doing the drywall? Normally something bigger, at least since six inches. Okay. It's gonna be okay for this size okay. of a patch. Okay. So using the right size knives to actually do yes. it. I, I tend to use something more like this. You're using a 10, is this right? Is that yeah, a, this is a 10. A 10, so I use a 12 often for these because I need a little more help to properly spread out the mud okay. and the texture and get it even and kind okay. of feather it. Um, I find that makes it a little bit easier for me. So that's the, that's the third mistake that we tend to make is using the wrong tools, the wrong knives. And along with that, the, the fourth one is not using the right mud. There's so many muds to choose from, so how do we know which ones to use for a patch? As Williams explained it to me, the green lid is the all-purpose, and this is the stuff that dries hardest. So this is actually just great to use, especially for large applications, but you want to use this as a base coat, and keep in mind that this will take up to 24 hours to cure, if not longer. Now, this is great for large applications like new walls and things like that, but if you're doing a small patch, you'll probably wanna use the hot mud for some of your base layers. You can mix this up a lot faster, it will set up, you can do multiple coats within an hour or two, depending on which time you're comfortable with. Now, both the all-purpose and the hot mud dry very hard and they're difficult to sand, which is why you wanna put light layers on underneath. The topping should always be the blue lid. You'll want to use either the plus three or the topping joint compound because it dries a lot softer, but it still does take a full day to fully cure. This is easy to sand and will make for a great texture or a base coat for orange peel if you're applying that. When you're mixing up your mud, you want a consistency somewhere between yogurt and peanut butter. It should be thick enough that you can spread it, but not so runny that it drips. And uh, now, just... Fill the gaps. Okay, now. So you hold the knife against the uh, place where you want to cut and then yes. just tear. Okay. Yeah, still good. All right, so walk us through. You're covering up the whole, okay, you're just doing all four sides. Okay. Nice thick coat. So now we go to the edge. So you're feathering it out towards the edge, okay. So you're applying pressure on the outside to smooth it out. I know that you, you're gonna see this line. Right. Don't worry about them right now. Mistake number four is not only using the wrong mud, but also getting our layers wrong. As we've just seen, the first layer should really just be to get everything level with the surface of the wall, and then you apply your mesh tape or paper. After that, you apply a second layer, and the key here is to keep it thin. You do not wanna cake it on or lay it on too thick, and if you do, just make sure to smooth it out and remove as much as necessary. There may even be some tape or paper visible through that first layer, and that is okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once that's set up, we can mix up a very small second batch and go apply a second layer on there. And again, we're keeping this super thin, and this one's gonna be a little bit nicer than that first coat, but not much better. Nice and thin, not too thick, and making sure to cover everything this time. Once that's had time to cure, we can then apply the topping joint compound. This is the blue lid stuff that we're gonna put on top, and we wanna get this one as smooth as possible and feather it on the edges, and you're progressively making each of these layers wider and wider so that you blend it into the surrounding wall. Now the fifth and final mistake that we tend to make is not taking the time to match the texture of the surrounding area when we do a patch repair. You can see here that he's just put a little bit of mud on the end of the knife and is dragging it across to create a texture very similar to the wholly smooth texture that I've got on my wall. He'll then feather everything out, drag it across, and then get a perfect match to the existing texture that we see on the rest of the wall. You can use this same technique for Santa Fe or knockdown texture. If you have orange peel, you wanna make sure to get this part as smooth as possible. Does not have to be perfect, but as close as you can get it, and then we'll spray some texture on the next day. So we'll circle back tomorrow and show you the finished result. All right, so it's been almost 24 hours and we let the fan run on this all night to make sure this is nice and hard. 
And this is dry as can be. So what's next to finish this off? Okay, just sand it. Does it matter what grit you're using here? 120, yeah. 220, something like 220, that? 220, 240. 240 and yeah. up, okay. Around the numbers, okay. it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> So this looks great. We're already done and we're ready to prime and paint and get this all finished up, yeah? Yes. Okay, so what would be different if we had orange peel or some other texture? If you have orange peel, you will do the same process and then just a spray. And so the orange peel spray. Yes. Any tips or tricks with using this stuff? Try it in another place before okay. you go onto your wall. Okay, so sample it somewhere else. Yeah. The other one I've run into is make sure, if you're doing this in cold weather, make sure this is room temperature before you use it. Yes. Uh, because otherwise it will get a little cloggy and clumpy as it comes out and it won't do a great job. So make sure this is warmed up. Um, and actually another tip is try to try at the store oh, okay. before you buy it. Oh, okay. So make sure you don't have a bad can? Yeah, so it happened a lot. Oh, okay, do you need to do anything else after you spray it or is that the final step? No, it's the final step. Okay, so uh, spray The only thing done. is try to all the time go uh, wider. Wider than your patch, right? So that it blends into the yes. existing stuff. Any final tips for those of us uh, that are DIYers trying to do, do this kind of thing? Just take your time. Okay. Yeah, take your time, try to follow all the tips that we already said. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, sounds good. With Williams here, he's actually been a great help uh, helping <laughs> us out with all these patches and showing us the pro tips. If you live in Utah along the Wasatch Front and need some help with your drywall, then I'll put his information in the description below. And if you want to learn more about some different types of patches and how to cover five different holes from really big stuff to the really tiny stuff, I've got another video that you can check out to show you exactly how to do that. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.